Good day everyone! In this video, we're going to determine the project duration and critical path of this project, which is the GREX Construction Corporation Limited. First, we will start with understanding the definition of critical path. So, a critical path is the longest duration through a project network diagram. So, let's take a minute to understand what it means. As you can see, this is a project network diagram where this is the start and this is the finish. This network diagram has six paths. So one path is A, B, C, D, G, H, and M. Another path is A, B, C, E, H, and M. Third path is A, B, C, E, F, J, K, and N. Also, A, B, C, E, F, J, L, and N are all on the same path. Fifth path is A, B, C, I, J, K, and N. Finally, the sixth path is represented by the letters A, B, C, I, J, L, and N. Now, if the duration of these activities such as A, B, C, E, F, J, L, and N is the longest duration to complete this full project, then A, B, C, E, F, J, L, and N is the critical path. So why critical path is called critical? It is called critical because whenever there is any delay in the activity on the critical path, the projects get delayed. So as a good project manager, you always need to pay attention to the activities on the critical path. As we can see above, we must pay close attention to the activities of A, B, C, E, F, J, L, and N. Because if any of these activities are delayed, the entire project is delayed, which is why critical path analysis is so important whenever you are working on a project. Moving on, well, look at another important definition of the critical path, which is called near critical path. Near critical path. It is important because if any of these activities gets delayed, this path can also become the critical path. So that is why tracking of the sub-critical path is also very important in line with tracking the critical path of a project. So remember this definition because later on, we will show you the near critical path in the project of GREX Construction Corporation Limited. Knowing that, let us try and move ahead and understand some more concepts of critical path. First is, if any activity in the critical path is delayed, the project is delayed. So, this is very important, since CP is the longest duration path. Now, if any activity in the project in the CP is delayed, then the project gets delayed. So, you need to keep this on your mind. The second is, there can be more than one critical path for a project but having more than one critical path increases risk. Now, it is a common misconception and sometimes this can only be a question that asks whether it's possible for a project to have more than one CP and the answer is yes, it is possible for a project to have more than one critical path but if you have more than critical path, it increases the risk of the project because the PMO has to go and manage two or three CP. So, it is not advisable to have more than one CP of a project. The third point is, a good project manager always does a hockey surveillance of the critical path because it's very obvious and it comes down to the first point that if you do not manage the CP well and you do not keep a close watch on the CP as a good project manager, the project can get delayed if any of the activity in the CP gets delayed. Now, we will move on and try to understand another important term with respect to the CP topic, which is float. So what is the definition of float? Float slot. It is the amount of time the early start of an activity can be delayed without delaying the project as a whole. Total float. In common lingo, float is called buffer time. Mathematically formula for float is equals to 
ls minus es equals lf minus ef. When it comes to activity, there is something known as an early start and a late start. Now, the early time of an activity is the earliest time you can start an activity. And the late start of an activity is the latest time you can start an activity. As for the definition of float, it refers to the period of time that the early start of an activity may be delayed without having an impact on the overall project. Okay, when it comes to project management, float is commonly referred to as buffer time. This is because we often say things like, okay, this activity can wait for a bit since we have some buffer time to approach for this specific task. So what we're really saying is that this activity has some float, which allows the project manager to deprioritize it for a period of time while concentrating on the activity that is on the critical part of the project. So with that in mind, there is one very important point that you should remember. The activities on the critical path do not have any float, which is why the critical path referred to us the path of zero float. Now, we will go towards the exact steps of how to solve a network diagram problem for critical path. Now, we will start with this activity schedule. We will use the so-called a convention method here. We have three columns here with two rows. We will start at the middle where A represents the activity description. Below A is the T where it is the activity duration. Next is the left column where ES means the earliest start while LS is the latest start. Proceeding to the last column, where EF represents the earliest finish and LF means latest finish. Now, let's construct first the flow of activities given. We know that activity A is the first activity in the project because it has no predecessor. Activity A should begin as a starting point of the flow. Activity B needs activity A to be able to start. In the same way that activity C requires activity B in order to begin. While activities D, E, and I needs activity C to be completed. Activity G depends on activity B. Next is that activity L needs activity E, as well as activity H needed activity E and G. While activity J needed activity F and I to complete. On the other hand, activity M will represent on activity H. Activity K and L need activity J to be completed, while activity N depends on activity K and L. And lastly, activity M and N have no successors, so they will go directly into finish. We will proceed to the actual project network. We will apply the convention method here where we can see the letters corresponding to the activity description and the numbers, which is the thing that is represents time duration that is in days. First objective is to do the forward pass. Activity A has no predecessor, so the early start time will be zero. Now, it is indicated that activity A has two days to be completed. Then, we can compute the earliest finish time using this formula. EF is equals to ES plus T. Applying the values given to the formula, then the earliest finish time for activity A is 0 plus 2 
is equals to 2. Next is the activity B that needs activity A to be completed. Since activity A has early finish time of 2, then the activity B will have an early start of 2. So 2 plus 4 is equals to 6. Proceeding to activity C where we take the value of activity B's earliest finish time of 6. Then we add it to 10 so we get 16 as earliest finish. Now we will go to activities who depend on activity C. Let's start with activity D where the activity C earliest finish time is 16. So we add it to 6 then we get 22 for earliest finish time of activity D. Second activity who depend on activity C is activity E, where we also get the 16 as early start of activity E, then add it to 4, and you get 20. Last is activity I. Same as the two previous activities who relies on activity C, we will get 16 and add it to 7, and it is equals to 23. Let's continue to activity G, where it adopts the earliest finish time of D, which is 22. So 22 plus 7 is 29. Activity F needs activity E to proceed, so we'll get the earliest finish time of E, which is 20, then add it to 5 and get 25 as earliest finish time. Now, we will continue to activity H that needs activity E and G. For activity H early start, we will get the highest value from activity G, which is 29, then add it to 9, and then we get 38 as early finish time of activity H. Proceeding to activity J that needs activity F and I to be completed, we also get the highest value of early finish time, which is from activity F, and that is 25. So 25 plus 8 is equal to 33. Back to the top of project network, which is activity M that depends on activity H. We get the value of 38 by the activity duration of 2, then we get 40. Activity K needs activity J, so we get the earliest finish time of activity J, which is 33. Then add it to 4 of activity K, and we get 37. Same as activity I, we will also add up 33 from activity J and add it to 5. Then the value of early finish time of activity L is 38. Second to the last forward pass is activity N, depends on activity K and I. Getting 38 from activity L to identify the early start of activity N and add it to 6, which is equals to 44. Now, since activity M and N has no predecessor, then we will get the highest value of early finish time, which is 44 from activity N. 44 days is the target of the whole project to be finished. Now, after completing the forward pass and identifying the earliest finish time of the project, which is 44 days, we will now proceed to backward pass. Since the 44 days is the earliest finish time of the project, then the latest finish time for both activity M and N is 44. In order to identify the latest start time of the project, we can use the formula. Latest start is equal to latest finish minus the activity duration or T. Let's start the backward pass to activity N. We will tap the earliest finish, which is 44 days, and put its latest finish time, so 44 minus 6 is 38. 38 will be the latest start time for activity N. On the other hand, activity M will be 44 minus 2, is equals to 42. Meanwhile, activity K and L will get the latest start time of activity N, which is 38 as the latest finish time. So for activity K, it will be 38 minus 4 will be 34 as its latest start. For activity L, 
it will be 38 minus 5 will be equals to 33. Proceeding to activity J that has two successors which are activity K and L. Opposite from the forward task that we need to get the highest value. In the backward task, we should get the lowest value of the successors. For activity J, we will get the latest start time of activity L, which is 33. Then, 33 will be subtracted from A is equals to 25. Now, both activity F and I will get the latest start time of activity J, which is 25. We will do the first activity F. 25 is the latest finish time of activity F, so 25 minus 5, and we will get 20 as the latest start time of activity F. Same process for activity I. 25 will be subtracted from 7, and we will get 18 as latest start time for activity I. Now, for activity E, it also had two successors, which are activities F and H. Since activity F has lowest latest start time of a project, which is 20 compared to the 33 of activity H, we will get the 20 of activity F as latest finish time of activity E. So 20 minus 4 and we will get 16. Going back to the top of the project network, we will do the activity H. We will get the latest start time of activity M, which is 42. So 42 minus 9 is equals to 33 as the latest start time of activity H. Activity G will add up the latest start time of activity H, which is 33, and it will be minus 7, which is equals to 26. Proceeding to activity D, we will get 26 of activity G and will be subtracted. 6 and the result is 20 as the latest time of activity D. Now, since activity C had three successors, we need to apply the same rules where we will adopt the longest or minimum value of latest start time of the successors. Among the three successors, activity E had the lowest or minimum value, so we will get 16 as the latest finish time of activity C. 16 will be subtracted to 10, then we will get the answer of 6. Next is we adopt 6 for activity B to be the latest finish time and minus 8 to 4, which is equal to 2. And lastly, we get 2 from activity B and minus 8 to 2, and the answer is 0. Now, we already performed the forward and backward passes of the project network. We will now proceed on how to compute the slack. In order to compute the slack, we will use either of this formula. The slack is equal to Fs minus Fs, or slack is equal to N minus zero. Now, we will apply the values from the activity tables. For activity A, the slack will be 0. Activity B, the slack will be 0. Activity C, the slack is 0. Activity D, the slack is 4. For activity E, the slack will be 0. Activity F, the slack is 0. Activity G, the slack is 4. Same as activity H, the slack is 4. Activity I, the slack will be 2. Activity J, the slack is 0. Next is activity K, the slack is 1.
Activity n is lap is also 0. Activity n is lap is 4. Lastly, activity n is lap is 0. Now, those activities with this lock of 0 respectively cannot be delayed. Specifically, those activities are A, B, C, E, F, J, L, and N. While activities that has value of slack that is above 0 will have time to be delayed, but the project will still be completed within 44 days. Activities D, G, H, and M can be delayed for 4 days, but still the target finish time will not be affected, as well as the activity I that can be delayed for 2 days and activity K can be delayed for 1 day. So that brings us to the end of the full session. To summarize, we have learned the concept of critical path. We have learned why the near critical path is important as the critical path. We have understood the concept of float, how to make a network diagram, and how we solve them. So, thank you for watching and listening. Bye-bye!